everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this cute sweet potato pie cow. This is a really, really fast project that you can stitch up very quickly. Now, the colors I chose reminded me of pumpkins and sweet potatoes and pumpkin pie and sweet potato pie, so that's how it got its name. But really, you can make this in any colors you like. And it works up in just seven rounds of regular double crochets, and I've added this fun band of puff stitches through the middle just to give it a little bit of texture and interest in a contrasting color. So the finished uh, dimensions of this cowl are 6.5 inches, and the circumference is about 32 inches. This is a project that I stitched up in less than an hour, so this is a wonderful project for gift giving if you need to make up a few cowls, or you can put them in a craft show, in your shop, things like that. If you need to make a bunch of pieces and have a lot of people on your list, for example. This will take you all through fall and into winter. It's nice and cozy and bulky too. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a 10 millimeter crochet hook. Now, I wanted to add as a side note, this, this particular brand, the Clover Amour, is N slash P. Sometimes you see it as just P. If you just stick with the 10 millimeter size and don't worry about the letters, you'll be just fine. Different manufacturers call it different things. And then let's talk about the yarn next. So I used for the cow here, I used two different colors. I used a like a pumpkin-y orange and then like a cream color. For the tutorial, we're gonna switch it up because I love seeing patterns in different colors. So you'll need your primary color, which for this one I used orange. I'm gonna be using uh, Wool Ease Thick and Quick in the raspberry colorway. And then I also had just a little bit of the Blossom colorway left over that I'm gonna be doing this contrasting uh, row of puff stitches. If you need to substitute yarn, just look on the yarn label for a super bulky six. And then this particular yarn recommends a nine millimeter hook, but we're gonna be using the 10 millimeter hook. So look for the yarn that's a super bulky six that recommends the nine millimeter hook. And also, this is a great project for using some odds and ends and leftovers as well. Okay, we're gonna work our cowl from the bottom up. So we're gonna be starting here and working our way up. And I'm gonna keep this just nearby as a reference for us. So you'll want to begin by putting a slip knot on your hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. We're gonna do a starting chain of 46. This is worked in the round, so I'll show you how to join in just a moment. So we're gonna chain 46. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. Now I'm gonna zoom in just a tiny bit so you can see what we're doing here, okay? So once again, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, whoops, there's something in my yarn. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. So next what we wanna do is join with a slip stitch to close the round. So what we're gonna do is go all the way down to the very first chain you created and join with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through. Now bring it through the loop that's already on your hook, okay? So this will be the bottom of our cow, okay? So now we're gonna start working upward. Okay, so we're gonna stick with this color for now and then we'll go change colors in just a bit. So for round one, we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then in this first chain that you come to, you're gonna work a double crochet, okay? So wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So then what we're gonna do is just work a double crochet in each chain all the way around. Now I have this tail here and I'm holding it along the edges I work and crocheting over top of it while I'm holding it so that way it's weaving it in as we go, okay? 
And you can see just with that first couple of stitches, we have quite a bit of height already. So we're just gonna go all the way around working a double crochet in each uh, chain. Okay, so I'm gonna continue working my double crochets. And then once we get towards the end of this round, we're gonna rejoin. And I'm, right before the round is complete though, I'll show you how to join to close the round and then we'll get started on round two. Okay, so I'm just coming to that last chain, working that double crochet. And now we're ready to join. See that chain three we did at the beginning of the round? Now we can join to close the round. So insert the hook into that topmost chain, the third chain up, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. So already round one is complete. So let's move on to round two. And as you can see, we're, we're um, working our way up here, okay? So round two is very similar to round one, but instead of working into chains, we're gonna be working into stitches, okay? So once again, we're gonna chain three. One, whoops, two, three, and then locate that first stitch. So here's the first double crochet of the row. There should be a little loop at the top. Work a double crochet into that first stitch, just like that, okay? Well, let me get a little bit more yarn off my yarn ball. And then we're just going to work a double crochet in every stitch all the way around. I told you this would be super duper easy and you can knock a bunch of these out, maybe even a couple during uh, the sitting of a movie or something like that. So if you're trying to get some gifts knocked off of your list, this is a wonderful project, okay? So I'm just gonna work my double crochets all the way around, and then once again, when we get towards the end of the round, we'll rejoin and move on to round three. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of round two. I'm just putting that last double crochet in that last stitch. And now we're at our starting chain once again. So count three chains up, one, two, three, and insert your hook, and we're gonna join with a slip stitch. So bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Okay, we have quite a bit accomplished already. So we have our first two rounds here. We're gonna continue with round three, which is gonna be the same exact thing as round two. And then we're gonna get into this really pretty puff stitch uh, center of our cow. Okay, so once again, we're gonna just repeat round two. So let me just get you started and then we'll do the same thing we did before. So chain three, one, two, three. Work a double crochet into that first stitch, same exact thing you did before, and then work a double crochet in each stitch all the way around your cow. okay? So we're gonna continue around and then rejoin towards the end of round three once again. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of round three. I'm just working my last double crochet in that last stitch. And once again, we're gonna count one, two, three chains up join with a slip stitch to close the round, okay? So this is what we have so far. We have a nice start to our cow. So this is where things get really exciting. This is where we're going to do this really fun puff stitch detail. So I'm gonna grab my other yarn color and my scissors, and then what we're gonna do is cut the yarn and fasten off. Now, if you don't wanna do this part, you can just continue repeating round two over and over again until your cowl is as tall as you would like it to be. But I think this puff stitch detailing is so much fun. So let's just get our tail out of the way for now. We'll deal with those later. So what we're gonna do is grab our second color and you can really have fun playing around with the colors with this. So I'm gonna take this lighter pink, the blossom, and where we tied or fastened off rather up here, see that stitch? where this is where we fastened off and there's a stitch right there. So what we're gonna do is insert the hook into that stitch, hook our yarn right on there and pull it through. And we're just gonna tie it right on. Now, I have to say as a side note, there's lots of ways to join a new ball of yarn. I usually just cut it off and tie the new one right on. If you have a preferred way you like to join yarn, please feel free to do that instead. Okay, so let's also get this tail up out of the way as well. So where you tied that yarn on, that stitch, reinsert your hook back into that stitch, bring up a loop, and then once again, we're gonna chain three. One, 
two, three. Now, if you've never done a puff stitch before, we're gonna go very slow so you can really uh, see how this is done. If at any time you need a review, simply back up the video and YouTube has a setting where you can also set it to slow motion if you like. Okay, so let's get a little bit of yarn off this yarn ball and we're gonna begin by working a puff stitch into this very first stitch of our round, okay? So locate that first stitch, see that first double crochet post, and there's the loop at the top. So what we're gonna do is wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the stitch, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, reinsert it back into the same stitch, bring up a loop, you'll have five loops on your hook. Let's do that once more, wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into that stitch, bring up a loop, seven loops are on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all seven loops. And you might need to kind of wiggle your hook through all those loops, okay? Then what we're gonna do to finish off the stitch is just chain one to close off the top of that stitch. So if you see the written pattern, if you're also going by the written pattern, it'll say, to work a puff chain one. So that's simply what we just did. We worked our puff stitch and then we closed it off with the chain one at the top, okay? So we're just gonna work a puff stitch into every stitch all the way around our cowl, okay? So let's do this a few more times nice and slow together. Hop on over to the next stitch, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the stitch and bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, reinsert it back into the stitch, bring up a loop, five loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the same stitch, bring up a loop, seven loops are on the hook. So you just count three, five, seven, and you'll know you're finished your puff. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all seven of those loops you just created. Once again, you might need to kinda shimmy the hook through there, especially if the yarn is splitting a little. And then finish it off by ch chaining one to close off the puff stitch, okay? All right, so it should look like that. Now, I also wanna point out, sometimes when we make a puff stitch, see how that looks a little bit loose there? Our puff stitch can look a little sloppy. So when that happens, you can just pull that right out, put your hook back in there, and work the stitch once more. And a little trick you can do when you're working puff stitches is just kind of go like this. Once you get all the loops on there, it'll kind of straighten everything out and then try that once again, okay? And that one looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so let's do a few more together. Hop over to the next stitch. Let me get a little bit more yarn here. This round takes very little yarn and it's a wonderful way to get rid of all those extra yarn scraps that you have. Okay, hop on over to the next stitch. Yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Three loops are on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. Five loops and seven loops. Just like that, you, you need to give a little wiggle there. And wrap yarn around hook and bring it through all seven of those loops. Okay, so now we have a couple of puff stitches happening here. All right, let's continue. Yarn around hook, three loops, yarn around hook, five loops, yarn around hook, seven loops, give it a little wiggle if you need to. Bring it through all seven loops and chain one. Just like that, okay? We're gonna continue all the way around with our puff stitches. So three loops, five loops, seven loops. And if I'm going a little too fast, just simply back up where we did that first one or two very slowly, okay? All right, so we're just gonna continue working our puff stitches all the way around, and then we'll rejoin and we'll be begin the top and final part of our cowl next. Okay, just remember as you're working, do three loops on the hook, five loops, seven loops, give it a little wiggle if you need to, and bring it through all seven loops, okay? So I'm just gonna continue and then we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, I'm just working that very last puff stitch in the last stitch of our round here. Remember three loops, five loops, seven loops. Give it a little 
tug to straighten it all out and then work that chain one at the top. Okay, so we're back to our chain three here. So we're gonna count three chains up and join with a slip stitch. Same thing we've been doing for previous rounds. Okay, and then wrap the yarn around the loop and bring it through, okay? So if we go back to our cowl up here, we're gonna be switching back to the uh, color where we begin. So I'm gonna switch back to the raspberry. As a design choice, you could even go with a third color for the top part. It's totally up to you. And if you're making lots of these, you might wanna play around with all different colors. Okay, so let's go back to the raspberry yarn here. So I'm just gonna cut the yarn once again and fasten off. All right, let's get that tail out of our way. And we're gonna, and I have to say as a side note, I only have a teeny tiny bit of this blossom left, so I was very excited to use up some of my yarn scraps. I always love doing that. All right. Here is our raspberry. Now go back to that chain three where we fastened off. Remember where we cut the yarn, here's our tail. Locate that stitch where you fastened off. Insert your hook into that stitch. Hook your new yarn on and bring it through. And I am loving this color combination. I love the fall colors, but this raspberry and blossom is really pretty together. Okay, so we're just tying it right on like we did before. Now, we can get these tails out of our way again. We're gonna deal with those at the end of the video. Okay, so grab your hook, reinsert it back into that stitch, bring up a loop, and chain. Whoops, I think I got my tail in there. Let's try that once more. Bring up a loop, there we go, and chain three. One, two, Three. Now this round is gonna be a little bit different. Instead of working into the stitches, we're going to work into the spaces in between the puffs. See, as you can see, that stitch is right in between those puffs. So what we're gonna do, we're, we're going back to the double crochet stitches, and we're going to work a double crochet. See that first space? This is our chain three. This is our first puff. There's a space in between. Work a double crochet right into the space. Okay, hop on over to the next space in between the puff stitches, right into the space, and work a double crochet. Work a double crochet into the next space, double crochet into the next space. Okay, and we're just gonna be doing this all the way around. This is a super easy round to work. You don't have to look for any stitches. We're just going right in between the puff stitches, okay? Just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my double crochets all the way around, and then we'll rejoin and move on to the next round. So we did round one, two, three, and four with the puff stitches, and we're completing round five. I didn't mention that at the beginning of the round, so I thought I'd mention that now. So once we get towards the end of round five, we'll rejoin and move on to our last few rounds of our project. So like I mentioned before, this is a really easy, super duper fast cowl to make. Okay, I'm just working that last double crochet in between the puff stitches. And then what we're gonna do is join, same thing we've been doing, third chain up, just like that with a slip stitch, and then we're finished the round. So round five is complete. We have one, two, three, four, five rounds. We only have a total of seven, so we're getting close to the end here. Oh, I'm not gonna cut. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm just trying to cut things here. Okay, so let's continue with round six. Round six, you're gonna see it's very similar to what we did back here, okay? So once again, chain three, one, two, three, and then you're gonna work a double crochet into that first stitch. Same thing we've been doing all along. And then work a double crochet into the next stitch, just like that, and into the next stitch, and all the way around the cowl. So I'm just working my double crochets in every stitch all the way around. So let's continue with round six by working your double crochets 
And then once we get towards the end of the round, we will move on to round seven, our final round of our cowl. And then you'll have a completely finished cowl in very short amount of time. So let's just continue around and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, coming up to the end of round six, working that last double crochet in that last stitch. Once again, we're gonna join in the third chain up with a slip stitch. And now we're ready for the final round. So we're just gonna be repeating the same thing we just did. Let me just get a little bit more yarn here for us. Okay, so chain three, one, two, three, and then just work a double crochet in every stitch all the way around. Okay, so same thing we just did. So I'm gonna just get this last round in here and then when we rejoin, we're gonna finish off this round and also weave some of these ends in to finish up our cowl. Okay, so once again, just working that last double crochet in that last stitch for our final round, we're in the home stretch. Count three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close. Now we are done. So you can cut the yarn, go ahead and fasten off. Now I wanted to mention, if you want your cowl to be a little bit taller than what I've done, I really like the slouch that I got with this height, but you can always add more rounds to the top and before you switch to the puff stitch round, you could always start with some more rounds as well. So, or you could also uh, do another round of puff stitches and then do another repeat of this to do like two rows, okay? Or two stripes rather. So you can really um, get creative with this. This particular one, we stitched up very, very quickly. So once you're done, and I wanted to just show you, we started with a brand new skein of the Woolies Thick and Quick and I have some yarn left here. Now you can use this for your next cowl. I'm not convinced you could get another raspberry cowl out of this, but you definitely have would have plenty of yarn to uh, put some puff stitch rounds. But feel free to experiment if you wanna just do like a raspberry and then another color and then a third color, you know, to use up yarn, which I always love to do. So the last thing we need to do is to weave in our ends. So just turn your cowl inside out and you can see what those puff stitches look like from the flip side. And see this end, remember we wove this in as we went along? For that end, you can just snip that and you're good to go. For these other ends, what you wanna do is grab your tapestry needle. Now I grabbed a tapestry needle that's really small. I should have grabbed a much bigger one, but it's all good. So you're just gonna thread your tapestry needle. Now, whenever you have a project with stripes, you wanna stay in the, the same color as your, your end, okay? So I'm gonna just weave mine into the raspberry portion of my cowl, just like that. And I'm gonna just go in one direction. Again, my tapestry needle is teeny tiny. And then go in the other direction. Um, and that'll help lock that tail into place. Another thing you can do to lock those tails to keep them from popping out is to go in between the plies of yarn as well. That's helpful. Okay, and then you can just trim. And then you'll just repeat for uh, the other ends. And when you do these light pink, just stay in the light pink areas. So let's turn this right side out because I want to kind of put it next to our other finished towel over here. They look so pretty. And we made these very, very quickly and the colors are just beautiful. And I have tons of this super bulky yarn on hand that uh, I'm gonna try and make some more for the gift giving season. These make wonderful gifts. You could even make a pair of them for two friends that match. You could uh, whip up a few for kids. I know that uh, kids who are school aged will take things to school and they end up in the lost and found. So if you whip up a few, maybe have a spare cow, uh, that's helpful also. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is the Sweet Potato Pie Cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.